Hello, today I'm going to be talking about the AMS dashboard. And this is the place where you go on Amazon Marketing Services to manage your campaigns, to create new campaigns, to see how campaigns are performing, and also to change the settings for your AMS account. If you go to ams.amazon.com in any browser, Windows or Mac or Linux or what have you, you should come to a screen like this. If you don't have an account, you click the Start Advertising button. But if you do have an account, and I assume everybody here does have one, you click the sign in button or the link. So I'm going to click that, enter email address and your password credentials, click the sign in button, and then you will come to this screen. Now, this screen looks a little bit busier than uh, someone's screen who is just getting started, and that's because I have a lot of campaigns, but I'll try to walk you through the, the basic parts. You can click out of these little pop-up windows that appear. And at the top of the screen, you'll have the name of the active brand that you're working on. Most people only have one, but some people, they have more than one. And you can see when I click this drop-down menu, I have options to uh, switch to one of the other brands that I manage. Uh, billing history, manage users, payment settings, that should be pretty self-explanatory. The advertising link that takes you to the campaign manager, which is actually this page, this section down here. But there's some other operations as well, including bulk operations, which is outside of the scope of this video tutorial, and advertising reports, which is basically lets you see performance. Although this screen here actually does show you some performance metrics as well. Stores is outside of the scope of this particular video tutorial. This is for people or for companies that have lots of brands or lots of products, uh, you know, trademark terms that they can use with those products. So that will not be relevant for this basic uh, tutorial here. Um, at the top of my screen, I actually have two campaigns. Uh, this one here and the LinkedIn PD interests. Uh, these are campaigns that I created, but Amazon reviewed them and then they rejected them. It's not bad news. Usually it's some minor mistake that I may have made. Uh, common things include if you use capitalization on the wrong words, they don't like you doing that, uh, or you use a, a like a tagline that they they're not comfortable with. And typically, the tagline might have a claim that can't be supported, like you know the number one product in this category. They don't like you saying things like that, so they might reject it. But they give you an option to either edit it, edit the advertisement so it meets the criteria that they allow, or you can delete it. Below that, this is where a lot of the interesting metrics for existing campaigns show up, as well as tools to manage new campaigns. Of course, the new campaign button that will launch the screen that will allow you to create a new campaign, and I have some other videos about that. You can search for campaigns that you have, although if you've just gotten started, you may only have you know one or two campaigns listed here, but I have something like 200, 200 campaigns, so sometimes if I want to quickly find all of the campaigns that meet a certain criteria, I'll just type in a term like PD. That's the abbreviation that I use for product display ad. And you can see all of a sudden, all the campaigns that I've labeled with PD, they show up here. Okay, so uh, going across some more, this icon here, um, it looks weird, an arrow pointing at something. It Basically, this is a file that lets you import data into a spreadsheet program like Excel or Google Sheets, and then you can manipulate the data yourself. However, um, this tool that Amazon provides, you can actually do a lot of manipulation like sorting and searching on your own. So you, you might not even need that, uh, but advanced users might use it. Uh, date range last month. This is actually pretty important because the default for it is lifetime. So lifetime means the lifetime performance of the, of the advertisement that, advertisements that you have running. And the problem with that is some of your advertisements may have been running for months or years so if you're looking at the lifetime data, it's not really telling you about recent performance. For this reason, I always like to, to change this to, let's say, the month to date or last month or sometimes customize, like a certain date range. But let's just do, for the sake of this tutorial, the month to date. That will show me the active performance right now. And also what I can do is I can uh, switch it from the default, which is 25 results per page, to... 100 or even all of them. And I'm going to do, let's just do all of them. And basically you can see if I scroll down, all of my ad, ad campaigns will show up. So let's go to these columns and explain briefly what they mean. The basic 
you know, the basic unit for an Amazon marketing services campaign is whether or not it's running. And you can see that I have quite a few that are running, but other ones that are paused and a few of them that will say product out of stock or uh, campaign ended, campaign in ineligible, something happened there. I don't even know what it was. Um, but the running, the ones that are running are the ones that are most important because those are the ones that you're still spending money on. If you click the button, you can change it to pause or terminate. And some, I, I rarely terminate them, uh, but what I sometimes do is I pause a campaign because it's not performing or I want to take it out of circulation for a little bit, uh, maybe for seasonal reasons or who knows, I'm going on vacation or something like that. Um, so that's, that's useful to know. You can also click any column here and it will sort it, um, usually by alphabetical or lowest value to highest value. So let's, let's see what happens when I click status. And you can see all the paused campaigns show up on top. If I click it again, it will reverse that. So now it's showing the campaign ineligible and then all my running campaigns. Uh, campaign name is self-explanatory. This is, almost all of these are names that I've given the campaigns myself. And I'm, I usually like to use the name of the product that I'm advertising as the very first uh, word. So I can, you know, I'm familiar with it and I can sort it easily. And again, if you click on this campaign name, it will sort them alphabetically or reverse alphabetically if I click on it again see that so these are all my campaigns starting with uh, the letter W and then it will go to uh, T you know we'll go in reverse alphabetical order but if it's just alphabetical order I have a I have a, um, a book that my company sells about acid reflux and heartburn so that's showing up at the top and you can see I've also used other terms to uh, kind of inform myself when I'm browsing them what the ad is about so this one's about the paperback book that I'm selling. Uh, sometimes I might say the Kindle version or the hardcover version or whatever. Type, there's four types of AMS ads currently, product display, sponsored products, headline search, and then um, lock screen ads. Uh, but most of mine are in the sponsored products, product display, and headline search. Start date and end date. This is useful if you're, if you're um, kind of organizing campaigns uh, you know, according to a certain time period, and you use the end date function, which basically means you're telling it to end at a certain period. And that might be useful if you are, for instance, let's say that you're having a Halloween themed ad. So of course, you'll want that ad to probably run from October the 1st to October the 31st. You don't want it to run any longer than that. And these two columns can help you sort out uh, when they're starting and ending. Um, I'm going to sort this out to the most recent ads. So these are the most, these are the, this is the last ad that I created a couple weeks ago. Budget is your daily budget. You can see most of them are about $5 for me. And by the way, that's the maximum that you'll pay. For most of my campaigns, I actually uh, spend less than that every day because maybe it won't use up all of the, um, all of the money that I'm allotting to it. Impressions means every time that ad is uh, supposedly seen by somebody, and that means it's displayed on the screen. It doesn't mean that someone's actively paying attention to it, but it's a good metric to see kind of generally, you know, how many people are looking at an ad. And this is in the month to date. So in the past two weeks, this ad has been shown on 62,000 um, web pages or mobile device views on the Amazon app. And of those 62,000, uh, 97 people actually clicked on the ad. You can see here the ACPC means average cost per click. So I set a budget for, I believe I set a budget for around a maximum um, maximum price per click of like 20 cents or 30 cents. But sometimes the, the clicks will be cheaper than that. So the average will show less than that. So it's 14 cents. But you can see on this advertisement below it, it's 18 cents. I have one advertisement. Um, it's actually a paused it's a paused advertisement that was 29 cents per click, which is actually pretty expensive. And I probably ended up pausing that one because you can see I didn't have any sales. If you look in the estimated total sales, that's the money spent on Amazon for the product. So this month, in the past two weeks or so, um, you know, I spent $3.40 on this particular ad, Excel Hardcover PD. Um, but I didn't get any sales at all, even though there are 24 clicks. And there could be a couple of reasons for that. There, why, is, why is an advertisement not getting any sales? One could be that the product's too expensive. 
Another could be that maybe the person clicked on the ad by mistake, or maybe there's something else about the ad that doesn't appeal to them. The tagline's not effective, or they don't like the cover, or, or who knows. So some of these ads aren't doing well, and actually, if I spend money on them and I don't get any results, I'll just pause it, or sometimes terminate it. But if it looks like it's selling, if it looks like people are buying things based on seeing the ad, then yeah, that's something I wanna keep going, uh, with a few caveats, which I'll, I'll explain in a minute. Um, this column here, spend, shows how much you've spent on the on the advertisement. So in the in the month to date, the past two weeks or so, uh, I've got 97 clicks, average cost per click, 14 cents, and that works out to uh, about $13.76. Um, and I've sold, or I shouldn't say I've sold, Amazon has sold 30 about $35 worth of product. Um, so that's, let's see, that particular book. So that's probably about two copies of that particular book. And then they give this figure here, ACOS. And this is a controversial number. It means average cost of sales. And that is, of the sales that take place on Amazon, so in this case, there's you know $34.79 worth of sales. You spent this much, $13. So if you divide that into this, this, the amount you spent on the ad into the sales, you get this number, which is, let's say it's 40%, which seems pretty good. It seems, oh, well, I've, you know, I've sold this, I've sold about $35 worth of stuff and I only had to spend, you know, about $14. That seems pretty good, right? But actually, ACOS is a very misleading figure. And the reason why is ACOS includes Amazon's profit as well as your own. And you shouldn't be concerned about Amazon's profit from selling your product. You should really just be concerned about what you or your company gets from selling the product. So I've had, I have some other videos and blog posts about uh, an alternate metric to use instead of ACOS. But it does serve as just a basic benchmark of how to evaluate ads against each other. So this ad is, has an ACOS of uh, 40%. That is... But that's, uh, that represents, of course, before Amazon takes their cut of whatever the, the total sales is. So, um, but anyways, ACOS is about 40% for this particular ad, Google Book PD Targeted. But if you compare it to another ad I started around the same time, MS Word Hardcover PD, this is a book about Microsoft Word, you can see the ACOS is 7%, which is really, really good. I've only spent about $2, yet I've sold... Um, nearly $40 worth of, of the product uh, on Amazon. So uh, Amazon has received $40 from the sale of my products. They'll keep a cut of that. I don't know, maybe that's about eight or nine dollars or something, and I'll get the rest. But that's still, that's very profitable for me. So this, this, is, this can be a useful number just to, to let you know if something's doing particularly well, or maybe you have to pay attention to uh, how the ad's performing or tweak some things like the amount you're bidding or the, uh, the headline you're using, or whatever, to, to make it improve. And if you scroll down, you can see all of these, all of these um, products have data associated with them, although some of, them, some of it is, is blank. For instance, uh, let's take a look at uh, this one, Family History Packet, um, product out of stock, and you can see that there's no, no data here. So the product is out of stock, so they're not able to, they automatically stop the ad. So of course, there's no performance data. Uh, but the other ad, you can see other ads that I have running, and I am getting some uh, results from them. So this is that's a basic overview of how the AMS dashboard works. Uh, currently, it's only accessible on the a full browser, so I don't think you'll be able to read this data on your mobile phone unless you squint <laughs> really deeply to to see what it says. But this is a useful tool, and I usually check this a couple times a week um, just to see how my campaigns are performing or to create a new campaign. Uh, thanks for watching and check out some of the other videos I have about creating campaigns and optimizing campaigns.